Hello, welcome to this Cat and Sam broadcast today. Um, I'm Cat, and this is my bestie Sam Second Cell. How you doing, Sam? Hi, Cat. I'm good. How are you today? I'm good. Well, I'm glad you're good today. It's cold here. I am. Is it? Um, yeah, it's properly cold. But uh, so yes, if I'm yeah, my nose is freezing, but I'm one of the lucky ones. I get some. I've got some central heating, so that's good. Lots of people don't at the moment over here. So, um, but yeah, all good, all good. Well, I was surprised to see you with out of sweater. Well, yes, that's probably why I'm feeling a little bit cold. <laughs> I decided to sort of put a, a nice snazzy top on and it's just like, oh, maybe I should have put my jumper on. But um, no, I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll cope. I'll manage whilst I'm, we're, we're having our lovely deep chats. Yes, about hard subjects. Yeah, hard subjects, hard subjects. And uh, I sent you some of the, the news today in time of... Uh, what's happening over here in the UK. And this just seems to be so, that there's a, there's a lot going on um, and Australia, but one of the biggest things, which is great, is we've just had the CPS guidelines about children absolutely being recognised as direct victims themselves. And also about referrals to mental health um you know mental health organization it's cams over here children and adolescent mental health service on the nhs but they've been crippled for years so you know there's gr there's great news but then there's there's the knock on as well of like how are these children actually going to get the help that they need you know um and, and and another one of of a police service with two women uh, who it's actually they're being held accountable and that they they were because they didn't react as they should do it was due to lack of lack of understanding around domestic abuse numerous phone calls and both these beautiful women died because of it but they 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 are being held accountable for that being a direct, having a direct impact on these women losing their lives. So, although it's progress, it's it's very sad progress at the same time. And you do kind of wonder when is enough enough for us as a society, you know, to right. Right, I agree. just call it out and just say, no, no more. We're just not having this anymore. Uh, and I think that's right. I was thinking actually, I was thinking about that's that's for me why our podcasts and our channel is so important is you know, I'm doing what I'm doing, advocating how I'm advocating, you're doing it, say you you know, you're doing your advocating and you do what you do in the States. There's other people in the US and others in South Africa. And I think just the more we communicate, we talk a lot about communicating, don't we, and passing information to and from each other of what's happening here, what's working, what's not. Same as, like, say, in you know, Australia or South Africa. And the more voices we can bring to the table, the more as a society, because that's what it needs to be. I don't think we can keep looking at agencies like the police and CPS to fix it for us. It's There's too much to do in in that arena. There's, there are changes happening, but they're, they're going to be slow. And whilst those changes are happening, people are dying every day. Yeah, right. I was talking to somebody yesterday about um, parental alienation. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Interestingly enough, uh, they didn't understand even what that was and what the thought process was about parental alienation. And 
I was bringing up the fact that France has that law that keeps kids mm -hmm. um, when there's been abuse in the home away from the perpetrator, which I think is brilliant. Yeah. Um, and why not uh, fail on the side of the kids? I mean, why not fail on the sides of the parents if the kids are taken care of? Mm. And um, if you have a kid that's clinging to one parent, obviously that parent feels safe to that kid. Mm. But maybe not, because then you have kids that are wanting to protect. It's interesting how all of that works. It's a, an extremely complex... I mean, on the one hand, you've got the concept of parental alienation and mm -hmm. the, the the man who came up with it who is, a, you know, his, his qualifications really to be doing, coming up with such a, a, a well-used concept, especially in the courts of law, are questionable. And oh, certainly I didn't know that. Who is it? Um, I can't remember his you name know? off the top of the hat, but he's, he's also... It's, it's there are it'll come yeah it'll come to me it'll come if it doesn't we can always um I'll, I'll mention it next time but there are very much there's very much two camps so on the one hand there's parental alienation in the form of it be it, it being a concept that a protective parent is who is protecting their child is being abusive to the other parent and then there's 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 the other camp where of 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 parental alienation where you're deliberately to, of a perpetrator following on from the patterned behaviors where you know they very often like to either insist on contact or you know get their court orders for contact or get their court orders even for um residents and then they'll just they just ignore and abuse the kids so but in in that process what they will do is alienate them from the safe parent the children so it's parental alienation i think we were talking about language, and I think this particular area is something that needs different language because those two words, parental alienation, need, mean two different things in two different camps. And so that, that needs to be looked at. We need to come up with a different word for what it is when a perpetrator uses it as part of that of the of the coercive and controlling pattern and uh, insists on having because we know we know it's really common that with uh, visits they'll they'll plan to visit then they won't turn up or they'll be late or they'll uh, use those opportunities to abuse the resident parent the the you know the victim parent of domestic abuse so that's all really commonly known so the parental alienation within that those patternings i think need, needs to be called something different to the or separated out so it's it's not that parental alienation doesn't exist it does but and it's in a perpetrator sense but a, a, a healthy parent, a protective parent, who keeps is trying to protect their child from further abuse. That is not parental alienation, but it's often called that when it's not. So that really, really needs to get um, sorted out. But part of the problem is, like in our country, we have presumption of contact no matter what, even when they sexually and physically perpetrate sexually and physically abuse their own children, there is still, in the point of law, um, 
a presumption of contact being the healthiest thing for the child. Well, anybody in your right mind would know that it wasn't. But that's why this change or this CPS gui guidance, so it, that children becoming victims in their own right was recognised in law last year here. But this, this CPS guidance around it and what that actually means is really important. So hopefully the parental alienation thing where it's called that when it's the protective parent protecting their child. Maybe it should be protective alienation or something. I don't know. Not even alienation. It's just protection. Um, that's That will really help because it is re-establishing children's own rights. So uh, that's, right. yeah, that's a pretty key, pretty key step forward today, I think. Well, you know, here... One of the things with, um, you know, you have, it's interesting because we'll talk about this in the language when we talk about language, but at the same time, you have people who, um, will set up, uh, you have a perpetrator that will set up a situation, um, saying something has happened and you have the entities come in like uh, the child protective services that we have here with the CPS or um, the school or other mandated reporters that are supposed to report if something's happened and they will take and use those systems to vein as if they're being alienated uh, by saying they never got a text, get a text and delete it, uh, didn't get an email, get an email, delete it, saying that the other person is doing this to them. And the other person is irate because they're being accused of something that they didn't do. And then we're law enforcement is looking at them because they're so irate or the judicial system is looking at them because they're so irate that they're just angry about the about the breakup between the two of them instead of it being about the kid when it's not even that so it's so um ingrained in there that until people start to understand the systems and watch at what's going on um, within that system. But if you have kids that are old enough to be able to speak, to say, I would rather stay with mom, but you know, they also have to feel safe. Mm -hmm. But then the, 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 children are, say yeah, the children are negated by saying, oh, they've been coached. You know, well, you know, children, children, you can't coach a child that and and the most ridiculous thing i have said I've, I've said this to you before is in any other scenario any other adult other than the other parent or, or legal guardian the the protective parent usually the mother but the, the protective parent would be hauled over the coals for not doing those things. You know, they would be they would be hauled over the coals for putting their child in, in harm's way. So it's 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 just the strangest flip around. Because when you look at it logically, if you look at it really, really logically, okay, um we've we've both we, you know we're both single parents right and i don't know about you but what single parent do you know where actually they wouldn't be happy you know they would actually be really happy to share the care of that child with somebody to have respite you know it's it, it is harder when there's just you so why why would you stop that if if the other parent was healthy why on earth would you not have a Friday night to yourself to go out on a date, say, or just to sleep and have a lie-in in the morning? Why would you not want that for your child? And why would you not want that for yourself? Do you know? 
it's, there's, there's, when you actually start looking and say, what benefit is it? it? What benefit is there to a protective parent of deliberately withholding contact with the other parent? And the key is the protective parent as opposed to an abusive parent. And I think the more we right. look at that, the more we'll see the differences, you know? But uh, but at the same time, Sam, think about, like, what you just said and now put that scenario in the understanding that you have of the perpetrator. The exact wording that you're using is wording that they would use. Why would I hurt my my child? Why wouldn't I want to take a respite? Why wouldn't I want to you see what I'm saying? That I mean that's you know understanding the manipulation that's there because it's the action that's going to show the manipulation. I think I and maybe not. I don't know. I'm just I'm just posing it at at how difficult it is for us to be able to see who the true uh, perpetrator is. Um, and I'm talking like here, one of the experts was telling me that if um, we go into a situation and it, it this was about five years ago. And the person that is being quiet is the one that we're going to watch now because it used to be the perp the person that was so outraged, but now the perpetrators are being quiet so that when law enforcement sees them, they see them as calm and they see them as, and, and it's that whole reactionary abuse that happens to get people to, um, to question that whole system and it has to be looked at more. And, you know, I'd like to continue this conversation um, into uh, a, a more video. Oh yeah. No, well, cause it's, it's, It's a deep. It's a great conversation. It is, and it's a, and it's a complicated one. And and getting back to this channel and why we're at the um, the podcast and why we're doing what we're doing and bringing more voices on board, whether that's professionals, whether that's other lived experience, is that will help. The more we have conversations around this, the more we can lead to actions which lead to change. Um. So it's about that thing as well of 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 whatever anybody brings to the table, we all hear each other. We might not agree with each other on everything or, you know, somebody might challenge us. It might make us think. But it's the having of those conversations is so that we as a society can get a grip with it and just be able to just say, no, we're not having this anymore. That's how I feel. Exactly. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And um, I think that in, in your use of bringing up that word um, and talking about how it's wrong in how it's structured and how it's thought out and then, you know, In how it's thought out is um, what needs to happen in our societies to try to figure out how do we see this, how do we combat it, how do we help the child not have to suffer in it. Um, I was watching a documentary uh, la this morning, actually, and... Um, this young girl in Texas 
uh, woke up. This is like probably like 20 years ago, I think. She woke up. <coughs> Maybe it was about, well, anyway, 15 years ago. But she woke up to dreaming about gunshot. And then she heard gunshot. And she heard 15 gunshots. And she was shot at. She was grazed across her leg and into her arm. And she was like 11 years old. And she just played dead for two hours while he rummaged, this man rummaged through her house. And he killed, she saw him go into her brother's room and she saw him kill her brother. Or she saw him shoot at her brother. And she laid there for two hours. She didn't know if everybody in the house was killed or not. But when the house went silent, they lived in a really rural area. And she went out and she called for help. Law enforcement came and... Um, Hello, thank you for watching our channel today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for any new content and find us on Patreon and your favorite podcasts. We hope we're one of them. Bye-bye.